welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now, today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII, but something that actually happened in Scotland. But on this day in Tudor history, the 14th of December, 1542, six-day-old Mary, daughter of King James V and his second wife, Marie de Guise, became Queen of Scotland. She became Mary, Queen of Scots. By the time of his death, 30-year-old King James V of Scotland, son of Margaret Tudor and King James IV, had ruled Scotland for 29 years. Like his daughter, he'd become monarch in infancy when his father was killed at the Battle of Flodden on the 9th of September 1513, a battle against the forces of King Henry VIII, Margaret Tudor's brother. He'd been crowned on the 21st of September 1513 at Stirling Castle, and he was just 17 months old. I'll give you a link to my video on his life so you can find out more about his life and reign. War had broken out between Scotland and England in the summer of 1542, when Henry VIII had made an alliance with Emperor Charles V against France. Scotland and France were old allies, so Henry sent men to the Scottish borders to prepare for war. On the 24th of August, the Scots defeated the English at the Battle of Haddon Rig. So Henry sent seasoned soldier and leader, Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk, the man who'd commanded the troops so successfully at Flodden to command English troops again. In November, 1542, James decided to divide his force into two, mustering one force with Robert Lord Maxwell at Loder and putting the Earl of Murray in charge of one at Haddington. James stationed himself at Loch Maven Castle and wasn't present on the 24th of November, 1542, when Lord Maxwell led a force of between 15,000 and 18,000 men against a much smaller English force, numbering around 3,000, led by Sir Thomas Wharton. The two sides met on the edge of a salt marsh at Solway Moss, and the English routed the Scots. Some Scots died of drowning in the marshes and river, and many hundreds were taken prisoner by the English. On hearing the news of the resounding Scots defeat, a depressed King James V returned to Edinburgh to speak to his council and to organise further raids against the English. He was taken ill with a fever in the second week of December, and by the 12th of December, he'd taken to his bed at Falkland Palace. While he was ill on the 8th of December, 1542, his wife, Marie de Guise, gave birth to a daughter, Mary. On the morning of this day in history, the 14th of December, 1542, the dying king appointed his wife, Marie, Cardinal Beaton, and the Earls of Murray, Huntley, and Argyle as joint tutors and governors to his infant daughter when she became queen and until she reached her majority. James V died later that day, passing the throne to his little girl, Mary. John Knox and the chronicler Robert Lindsay of Pitscotty both recorded that James uttered the words, it came with a lass, it'll gang with a lass. It came with a lass, it will end with a lass. As he lay dying, referring to how the Stuart dynasty began with a girl through Marjorie Bruce, Robert the Bruce's daughter, and how he feared it would now end with his daughter, Mary. However, the Stuart dynasty actually ended with another girl, Queen Anne, in 1714. And it's not known that James actually ever said those words anyway. James was buried at Holyrood Abbey in Edinburgh on the 8th of January, 1543. James's daughter, Mary, was Queen of Scotland until the 24th of July, 1567, when she was forced to abdicate in favour of her son, James, who became King James VI of Scotland at the age of just one. Mary was executed as a traitor in England in 1587 after being found guilty of conspiring against Queen Elizabeth I. Her son succeeded Elizabeth to the English throne as King James I after Elizabeth's death in March 1603. I'll give you links to my video on James V and also my Mary Queen of Scots playlist. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a man who spent most of his life serving Elizabeth I and who is said to have died of grief after his idea that she marry Robert Dudley, 
didn't go ahead. Do make sure you're subscribed by clicking round right about there and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 14th of December 1558, Queen Mary I was buried at Westminster Abbey. Mary had died on the 17th of November 1558 and had left instructions for Catherine of Aragon's remains to be moved from Peterborough and for them to be reinterred with Mary's remains so that mother and daughter could be together in death. Did this happen? Find out in last year's video. I'll share a link to that in the description for you. Thank you for joining me today. Please do give me a like and leave a comment if you wish. See you very soon. Bye-bye.